Planning is crucial for getting great drone photos and videos. Many people forget about it, but it is so important. But where do you start planning? What resources can you use and what should you focus on? This video will answer these questions and help you plan out your next drone shoot with confidence. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Adam with UAV Coach and this is part three of our photo and video series where I'll be teaching you all of the basics from capturing your drone footage to editing it. Make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss out. In this video, I'm going to explain the different resources you can use to know where you can fly legally, how to plan out your shots using Google Earth, cover different lighting conditions and how they influence your shots, and finally talk about different composition techniques for both photos and videos. Without further ado, let's fly in. Let's first talk about researching the location you want to fly at. Before you even take off, you should have a clear idea of the shots you want to capture and where you want to capture them. There are a lot of rules and regulations that you need to be aware of when flying, so it's a great idea to know different resources that can tell you where you can and cannot fly. One website you can check out is the DJI Fly Safe Geo Zone Map. This website will let you know where it is safe to fly, where flight may raise concerns, and where flight is restricted. After you find an area that is safe and legal to fly in, you can then begin to do further research, like looking for interesting landmarks or points of interest. For this part, I love using Google Earth and Google Maps. One of the great aspects about using these websites is that it shows you the view from a top-down perspective, which is an angle you can capture with your drone. Essentially, you can not only plan out where you want to fly, but also have a very accurate idea of what your shot will look like once you get there. I also like to find new locations or landmarks while using these sites. It's an awesome way to spark your inspiration, get a better idea of the terrain, and even plan out your flight path. Next, let's talk about lighting because it is key to capturing a beautiful photo or video. It affects shadows, landscapes, camera direction, and even your decision to go outside. Good light makes for great shots, but what are the different types of light? Let's find out. When taking pictures or videos, there are good and bad times to do so. The best time for superb light is the hours surrounding sunrise and sunset. The main light phases can be separated into two categories, the magic hours and the twilights. The magic hours include the golden hour and the blue hour. The twilights include the civil twilight, nautical twilight, and astronomical twilight. Golden hour is the hour leading up to sunset and the hour after sunrise. This time produces a nice golden yellow tone, perfect for landscape photography or videography. Blue hour occurs directly after sunset and right before sunrise and lasts for roughly 30 minutes. Blue hour is sometimes favored over golden hour because of the mellow contrast and textures it brings to different landscapes. Civil twilight follows blue hour and is the time when city lights and car headlights begin to turn on. It lasts for 20 to 30 minutes and is great for a lot of different shots. Nautical twilight is when it starts to become noticeably dark. During this time, cities start lighting up drastically and the sky turns to a full blue hue color. Astronomical twilight, aka complete darkness, is the beginning of lots of stars, constellations, planets, and even the Milky Way. For the most part when flying your drone, you will probably only shoot during daylight or golden hour. And after recent changes, you are allowed to fly at night, whether you're part 107 certified or just flying recreationally, but you need to have proper anti-collision lights that can be visible from three statute miles. If you can't access your location during golden hour or during the other times, you can still capture good photos and videos, even in the afternoon. Scout out interesting compositions and focus on different foreground or background elements. I always say it's better to get outside and try. You might be surprised at what you come up with. Also, remember to check your local weather report to make sure it's safe to fly outside. There are also many websites and apps that allow you to keep track of which type of light is occurring and when. For free websites, I recommend suntoday.org. You can easily put in your location and it will tell you exactly when golden hour is plus more. For free apps, I recommend SolarWatch Sunrise Sunset Time or Magic Hour. For paid apps, I recommend PhotoPills. PhotoPills is like a jack of all trades app that will not only tell you when golden hour and sunset are, but also allows you to use augmented reality to show you where the sun, moon, and more will be in your exact position at any time or day. 
Better yet, it has a drone section where you can put in your specific drone model and it will show you what a top-down shot of a certain area will look like with it. I've been using this app for around six years and absolutely love it. Next, we can talk about composition techniques. I'm going to split this up into two parts, photo compositions and video compositions, mainly because there can be some differences in the two, especially because video is usually constant movement. So let's start with photo compositions first. The first step when in the air is to look for patterns. From a high viewpoint, similarities or patterns will start to emerge, making for some exciting photos or videos. You might find patterns in the trees, on roads, or even in different colors. And as you keep looking for patterns, more patterns will usually show up, so just keep searching for them. The next couple of compositions to look out for are the most basic. If you have ever done any photo research in the past, you probably have heard of the rule of thirds or leading lines. The rule of thirds is like a cool secret trick that photographers love to use. It's all about splitting your picture into thirds. Imagine you're taking a picture of a breathtaking landscape with mountains and a big open sky. You have to decide which part looks cooler, the mountains or the sky. Whichever one you think is more awesome, you make sure it takes up two thirds of the picture. The other part is for the not so awesome stuff. This rule is super helpful for beginners and it makes your photos look more professional and eye-catching. To help with knowing which parts of the photo to split up, on DJI drones, you can turn on the grid mode, which will outline the rule of thirds on your screen, making it easy for you to frame your shot. Leading lines is another cool trick photographers use to make their pictures more interesting. It's when you have something, like a road or a bridge, that starts at the front of the picture and goes all the way to the back. The best part is, you can use leading lines with all sorts of things. Roads, beaches, fences, or even rows of lampposts or a river can create this effect. Leading lines are powerful because they tell a story and guide your eyes from one part of the picture to another. So give it a try and make your photos more captivating. One last photography composition technique to share with you today is just searching for a different view. When I'm taking pictures, whether it be on the ground or in the air, sometimes the best thing I can do is turn around. I sometimes get so hyper-focused on a certain area that I neglect everything else around me. With drones, you can also utilize your gimbal and look straight down. This usually will show off the area in a completely unique way that you haven't seen before. So for simplicity, just remember to look around a bit. Now we can move on to video compositions and techniques. All of the ones I'm going to list are the same from our last video in the series where I go over drone videography. If you want a more in-depth look on how to perform all of these techniques, definitely give that video a watch. I'll also link it down below. First up is flying in a straight path. This technique is extremely simple, but can be very effective. Depending on your scene, flying directly straight or sideways can be a great way to introduce a scene or just have a peaceful clip to showcase the area. Again, this is a very simple shot, but it can lead to some cool results. The second shot is flying with your camera pointed straight down. This is similar to the first shot, but just from a different perspective. This technique can be a cool perspective that you can only achieve with a drone. I've used this in many scenarios, from the beach, to the forest, to the desert. Play around with it and see what you can get. The third shot is orbiting a subject. Orbiting shots can be great to showcase any kind of subject and make it look dramatic. I almost always use orbits in any shoot I do. Just remember to go slowly and especially push the stick slowly. This will ensure a cinematic and smooth feel. The fourth technique is called the droney. You start close up on a person and then slowly fly back and up until you reveal the entire location around that person. This one is great if you want to reveal a beautiful location and also give it some perspective at the same time. A trick with these is to speed the middle part up in editing so you can get to the big reveal shot faster if that fits your edit. The fifth and final technique I'll share with you today is usually called a reveal shot and it's when you tilt the camera up when flying straight. A little trick is when approaching zero degrees, start to press the dial even softer. If you don't, the gimbal will abruptly stop at zero and the shot will look a little clunky. This is great for any type of shot where you wanna reveal something, but also showcase the area around. And again, if you wanna know how to perform all of these techniques, check out our intro to videography video linked down below. Now that you know how to plan out your drone shots, it's time to take things to the next level. In our final video of the series, 
we'll be going over the basics of editing your drone photos. We'll cover everything from selecting the right software to adjusting the exposure, contrast, and more. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. From everyone here at the UAV Coach team, we're wishing you blue skies and safe flying. I'll see you next time.